Hey folks, welcome back for the final section of uh, API Days Live Singapore. We are now at the final section. Hi everyone, of the welcome back uh, to the second half of the afternoon session of the industry track. Uh, we've also got on screen Zenon. Uh, Zenon Capron is uh, the CEO um, of Capron Asia. Um, oh, sorry, he's the director of Capron Asia. Okay. So, Anastasia, I think uh, some of the sound is coming from different track you might have opened. So, thanks for switching it off. Um, yeah, so sorry. I was talking about we are back again for the final section at the final day of API Days Live Singapore. And we have an amazing lineup of speakers, starting with Anastasia Nikitin, business expert API banking at Commerce Bank. And she will be talking about digital ecosystems in the era of open banking. We are following the same structure. At the end of our session, we will take any Q and A's, which you might have. So please feel free to drop any of the questions in the stage chat channel. Over to you, Anastasia. Hey, thank you, Dirash. So welcome everyone to my speech on digital ecosystems in the era of open banking. Uh, so we all know we live in very exciting times right now. APIs are on the rise, whether it comes to coping with re regulatory pressures or when it comes to improving internal efficiency with agile teams or also when it comes to creating and also engaging in new forms of partnerships. So this is what we all know also under open banking and open banking is currently unlocking the financial sector so it makes it easier for customers to access Financial, financial products and services more directly. But open banking doesn't only unlock the financial sector. It also, also unlocks the, the access to other industries and allows banks to go beyond banking and therefore to tap into different and new fields of business. And uh, if you have researched the topic of digital ecosystems, you may realize that this is probably still a new one. So there's probably not yet the right uh, strategy to go with and not that right or wrong yet right now. But what I'd like to show you is actually how Commerzbank is addressing the topics of open banking. So what have we achieved, achieved up to far and how are we also addressing the topic of digital ecosystems in order to keep, go beyond banking? And in case you may not be familiar with Commerzbank, I would like to give you a first a sh a quick overview of Commerzbank. So Commerzbank is Germany's second largest bank with roughly 49,000 employees and over 800 branches. And Commerzbank serves more than 11 million clients all over the world, which are private clients, business clients, and also corporate clients. And what is important to highlight about Commerzbank is that the company is currently undergoing a digital transformation. So we are on a way to become a digital technology business in order to serve our customers with digital products and services. And of course, this requires some organizational change and also some cultural change. And what Commerzbank has done, it, it has created um, a delivery organization which comprises all those divisions and units that deliver and produce digital products and services. And this a uh, delivery organization also comprises the technology foundations. So the most recent technologies in banking right now. So we have uh, clusters, for example, CI, CD, cloud, blockchain, and also uh, API banking is one of them. And just to show you our setup. So we're set up in an agile way. You may know this also under the Spotify model. So we have different cells in our cluster in API banking which are domain driven. So those cells deliver APIs on a certain domain, on a certain product domain, let it be accounts, let it be payments, loans, and so on. So as I said, they're domain driven and all those cells are also set up in a similar way when it comes to resources. So we have the div, biz DevOps approach uh, where we have next to product owner and scrum master, we have business experts, we have developers, and we also have task managers and operations in those cells and as i said we're part of the delivery organization which consists of more than 50 clusters so all of those clusters in the bank work according to this agile method and this helps of course to improve efficiency and make collaboration much more efficient and to show you how this has helped us to get into so-called delivery mode in api um, you can first see here that we have started out by late 2016 
as a kind of journey. So the first goal for us was to test whether these agile methods work in a bank and in, in the size of commerce banks. So we first we have made the proof that this works, that we're efficient. And by 2018, we were able to set the basis. So this was the time when all the teams were set up and uh, all the resources were there. And also this was the time when we have published our developer portals. We have an internal one and also we have an external one. And as you can see, ever since we've been able to increase the amount and the number of API operations. So we got into this delivery mode and this has been possible due to all those agile techniques. So we work according to Scrum. We have some safe elements in place. Uh, we also have a company-wide backlog. So we track it not only on a cluster and also in our teams, but also across those clusters. And we set our uh, agile KPIs, which are object objectives and key results in that case. So that we make our objectives measurable. And this was necessary to cope with the current change on the market right now. So you all know the market is changing, customer interactions and relationships are transforming right now. So everything is becoming more and more customer centric. Uh, also, there's new entrants on the market. Let it be fintechs, neo banks, but also big techs that actually disrupt banking right now. So all those new changes, they urge banks for a change. And this change is one of a technology change, it's technological change, it's an organizational and cultural change, but it also requires a change in mindset. So banks have to make sure that they stay relevant in customers' daily lives, but also in customers' daily business. And in order to achieve that, banks have to actually loosen themselves from the traditional banking approach. approach. So banks should not only provide the products and services and then deliver them to customers directly. But it's actually all about analyzing where the customers interact somewhere out there. So what kind of industries, what kind of sales of points do customers have, even if they're beyond banking. So by analyzing those top touch points with the customers, it is actually very important that you open up. So you have those interlinks up to those ecosystems and try to produce, uh, provide your products at the right time at the right place in order to benefit your customer wherever he needs them. So, and when we talk about the path to ecosystems, it's actually a very important approach. So you have to have a clear strategy in mind. And this starts of course with a clear API strategy. And we have the API first strategy. So the first thing for us was actually not an external way of thinking, but also an internal one. So. First, we have focused on internal efficiency with API. And this is very important because you have to make sure, especially when your company is, is of a big size, let's say the, the size of commerce banks, that you have a certain technological readiness in place. So once you have customers coming up with their demands, you have to be able to respond quickly to them and in a more efficient way. And this is only by providing that you have a certain internal efficiency and that you're ready to respond quickly. And the second, step for us was to open up. So this is when we had to do it actually based uh, on regulatory pressures. But uh, the first thing we did, we also tested it with selected users. So we did some UX tests. We also yeah, just followed the MVP approach to make sure what kind of experience can we gather and what can we do better or uh, yeah, how can we do it different maybe. And now we're actually at the point where we actively engage in open banking but that's not the final stage, of course. We want to go beyond and we want to engage in those ecosystems. So this is how we set our strategy. And if you talk about the internal efficiency, so you're actually your internal readiness for ecosystems and open banking, um, we also have to make sure that you have a clear awareness in your company. So the bigger your company, the more complex it is to make to create this awareness of APIs. It's not just showing them that API is just a, a technology, but also if you have all those stakeholders and product owners out there in the bank, and you have to make sure that they understand it's, it also helps them to create new products and enrich existing products with additional services. And in order to get this awareness, we have had several measures to basically educate the banks. So we had different uh, educational sessions for different roles. We did it for, business experts, we did it for developers. We've also created several events such as digital fairs to 
show how API works and what kind of ways. So to show the technical side and also the business side, the strategic side of API. And then we also have different um, communities set up and also educational videos to, to educate bank with, with this topic. And we also have set up a newsletter to um, keep our subscribers up to date on the internal side. So to show them what is new, what kind of API operations are new, uh, what kind of new partners do we have? So this is very important to get this awareness internally. So to make this central topic of API a more decentral one. And once you have this awareness, you actually start talking with your internal stakeholders, with the product owners, in order to commit on a certain goal and to create a certain API and a certain product. And this was, of course, not without challenges for us. So um, there's, of course, um, yeah, you have to make sure you have a, a common understanding of existing opportunity and that you understand what kind of benefits you can achieve with the new API. And there will be, of course, questions also, who is going to take care of the budget, who is going to bring in what kind of resources, and also who's going to do the prototyping or the monetization concept for a certain API. And also you will have cases where the decision is not based upon one single entity or division or cluster, but there's a few clusters involved that have to solve or create this product. So the way how we have sold this to deal with it is actually by creating a stakeholder roundtable. So first make sure you identify them, identify your stakeholders, make sure what kind of people have to be involved in order to make this product realizable. And the final output of this meeting of this stakeholder roundtable should be a commitment on deliverables. So you have to make sure that you can also um, keep track of what kind of steps has been made in order to realize this API product. And the most important thing here is that you have an aligned process on how to deal with those use cases. So you have to make sure that you keep track on the progress being made and also leave room for new ideas and new innovative use cases to come. So that's why we do it on a frequent uh, way. So we have it uh, every on every quarterly basis. And when we come to the external side, so when you start opening up, um, we also have clarified for us three different stages. The first was to open up with API. So this is basically having our developer portal in place and uh, placing our APIs on this developer uh, on this developer portal to make them ready to consume products. But the closer you move to ecosystem participation, you will actually realize that it's not just about making ready to consume APIs and ready to consume pr products. You just don't want to sell them and that's it. So it's, it's much, much more about partnership and collaboration. So this is actually key to ecosystems because at some point with API, you may lose the direct link to the customer because the interface is now being done by the partner. So you have to make sure that you have a clear um, clear goal with your partner, how to address and make your customers benefit from your products. And this brings you to the ecosystem participation, actually. So this will help you to create a good basis to engage in ecosystems. So here, just to show you what are the benefits of this the partnership. So we have uh, created a partnership program in Commerce Bank where we invite partners to think with us together about innovative use cases where they can bring, bring in their products and also their APIs and also the other way around. They can also use our APIs to enrich their products and actually benefit our joint customers. So here it's important that you, or the main benefit is that you increase your network first to be ready for this ecosystem and also helps to increase partner engagement because if you have this partnership, it's a very dedicated API partnership. So it also makes your API products much stickier since they're part of this partnership. It's an API partnership. And also, as I said, it improves customer retention because once you lose the link, the direct link to the customer, you still can work on customer retention if you work closely together and collaborate with your partner. And lastly, it also helps you to, once you have an ecosystem in the future or engage in ecosystems that you can organize your ecosystem interactions with your partner and coordinate the ecosystem's players. So you will know what kind of partner to go and what kind of ecosystem and what and to offer what kind of knowledge and services in those ecosystems. 
And then when we actually talk about the ecosystem participation itself, it's very important here that you do it step by step. So do the small baby steps first. Don't try, don't try to do the moonshot straight away and create your own ecosystem. So as I said, it's still a new topic. Banks and other companies are still approaching it. And the first thing to actually gain quick experience is just by participating in existing ecosystems out there. They may, may maybe not even be called ecosystems because uh, this is still a new term, but there's probably already a set of different products and services across different industries that are bundled in one kind of marketplace. So you have to make sure to analyze those kind of marketplaces and engage there with your products and, and integrate yourself there. And the first thing to do is actually by analyzing on a certain core product, what might be the right customer journey. So what is the, con the customer doing in order to achieve a certain need? So as I said, it's all about a customer centric approach. And there you will realize what kind of pain points the customer may have on its way to, to be um, serving a certain need. And this is exactly at those pain points, you will be able to provide your product at the right time and also at the right place, wherever your customer needs them. So by just doing this, by integrating into ecosystems that are already existent, you can get first experience, you can bring in additional revenue much quicker, and also it helps you to learn from the experience and then to identify what area, what ecosystem to tap next in order to extend your participation. And then when you create your own ecosystem and also start building all this up, it's all about the customer centric approach, as I said. So don't think of your products, don't do the product centric thing, but also think what kind of customer needs do you actually want to address? And when we think of a loan, so which is one of the main banking products, um, it's not the loan that the customer wants. It's not his basic need, but the customer's basic need in that case is buying a new house or buying a new car or create a new business. So whatever it may be, think it from the customer centric way. So this is where we all start with, put this into the core of your ecosystem. And then, as I said, do the analyze the customer journey around there. So on the left side, you will see all those obligations and tasks a customer has to do when he is um, trying to, to fulfill his own needs. So in order to buy a new house, this is a very common example when describing ecosystems, by the way. So um, the customer has first to do consultation, a location check, search for land and property. And by analyzing this journey, you will realize what kind of services can you address? Where can you address your products to serve the customer's need? And also there will be for sure products and services that you cannot deliver by your own. So this is where you have to enrich your ecosystem by other partners' services. And in that case, it may be providing electricity and gas. Of course, a bank cannot provide the services. And this is where you make those links to your partners and increase your ecosystem more and more and um, make it more centric to the customer. So this is what, what it all is about. And uh, I see I have to leave two more minutes. So uh, five more minutes for questions. So my, um, I wouldn't leave you without a clear call to action here, of course. So as I said, uh, the timing is right right now. Open banking is probably not just a trend. It will be here, it is here to stay. And it opens up new ways of partnerships and new ways of collaboration. So all what it is about is just about collaborating together. And the main objective is here to serve our joint customers with the needs, uh, with the right products they have in order to cover their needs. So let us collaborate, let us build together products that we can serve our customers to, and also let us standardize. Because if you standardize your APIs, it will make it much more easier for customers to use them, to implement them, to consume them. But also in the future, it may also help to manage your ecosystems much more efficient. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, now I left some space for your questions and I'm looking forward to them. And also, um, before we <laughs> start with the questions, also I would like to address it to you. Uh, feel free to contact me later on if you just want to have a chat and um, ask any further questions. So thank you. Thanks a lot, Anastasia. And I mean, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm definitely 
coming back to you for more of the questions because certainly I love the way you have conceptualized the overall talk because even from our audience perspective, we have a large number of audience which are at their initial stages or in their planning stages, typically coming from the BFSI or banking space. And these kind of guidances and this kind of transformation plan which you shared would be really helpful for them. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, Jirash. Yeah, so I think from the questions perspective, we do not have any questions as of now, and we do have a couple of minutes left. So from that perspective, uh, what I like to understand from you a bit more in detail when you talk about standardization of the APIs. And typically when we talk about banks with all the compliance and regulation, it becomes as much as difficult as possible. And you know it because you have done it already. So from that perspective, what do you think becomes a more of a best practices while standardizing your APIs, I think would be really relevant for the audiences. Yes, so in standardization, it comes uh, or it is much uh, more about the collaboration, as I said. So banks actually have to collaborate with each other because in the end, we have to serve our corporate clients and also private clients. And especially when it comes to corporate clients, they have to integrate those APIs into their systems. And with one bank, they do it in a certain way. With another bank, they have to do it on the other way. So it becomes much more complex, of course, to manage it for the customers. And uh, there's, of course, several initiatives right now in the market where uh, that offer banks to collaborate and also to keep uh, certain standards, such as the Berlin Group, for example. So, so this is very important. It is key that also banks work there together and uh, stick to those uh, standards because, yeah, as I said, it's it benefits the customer, but it's also a very important prerequisite to make ecosystems in future manageable. Absolutely. And that's why, I mean, I thought this question would be really relevant. And the next question which I had is ab about the documentation as well, because I was discussing with previous speakers as well. While standardization of the APIs, I think the documentation also becomes a uh, really key aspects of making it happen. So from your own experience, uh, how much documentation has played a key role uh, into your internal transformation? And uh, from any of the guidance perspective, whether it should be in their top priorities while prioritize, prioritizing it as well? Yes, of course. Uh, so uh, we also, as I said, we, we want to make this central topic a deep central one in the company. So it's important that you bring those people that have some touch points with APIs and that they all have a common standard how to um, how to specify those APIs, so how to do the documentation on APIs. And it's a, very important because, as I said, it's also a standardization thing because they have to be very easy uh, to be accessed and managed and also developed. And uh, we do several methods. Also in those education sessions that I met, mentioned in those trainings, we uh, train all the developers and business experts how to document your APIs. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's right. Yeah. Correct, yeah. And, and that's why I think the upskilling is also becoming a key aspect of it because you're driving the mindset change. You're also driving the behavioral change along with the technical aspects, which I think uh, becomes the core essence of collaboration, which you mentioned at part of your session. So thank you once again and really appreciate all your insights. And definitely, if anyone have questions, please feel, feel free to reach out to Anastasia and really appreciate all your time and efforts in doing it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diraj.